the attitude you have to the little things matters a lot. Being visible is really, really critical. My Bible says, be ye followers of them who through faith and patience has received the promise. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you associate yourself with. When we moved, we moved into Sterling, and then Sterling, I got a job as a cleaner. And then when I got a full-time job, I got in as a senior data analyst at PwC. And then one thing we must also know that in life, that there are ups and downs. Mm. If you can build a rapport with the interviewer and he likes you, even if you didn't even do well, sometimes you get a job. You need to join communities. Data analysis, a skill in high demand, shaping the future of industries worldwide. But what could compel a highly successful data engineer to leave the vibrant city of Lagos, Nigeria, and embark on a journey to the United Kingdom? New dispensation requires you to open yourself to new knowledge. A leap into the unknown, starting all over again. This is the story of Ayodeji. Okay, so my name is Fanny Ayodeja Didaya and I'm a data analyst, data engineer, data scientist. I work a whole lot of things within data and even right now I do a lot of robotic process automation now and business automation flows. The first thought of Jackpa came into my mind in, in 2017-18. It was 2017-18 and, and 2017-18 was also a time in my career, yes, quote and unquote, that's the time I was doing well. I left school 2012 13, starting to live a comfortable life in Lagos. I've become a digital marketing manager in a department in one of the leading PR firms in Lagos, Nigeria. Then, started seeing a lot, watching a lot of videos online, talking to friends, just talking career conversations, and they're like, oh, data analytics is a big thing, we'll become the next frontier. So from there, I registered for PDDM. Then one of the things that struck me in PDDM is that number one, I was the youngest in the class. And it was only me that was funding my PDDM education. And then PDDM was $1,000 then. That wasn't still enough for me. So I had about a three month, a, a five days boot camp in Akure, in Futa, mm. Coven Labs by Larry Amosha. So from there, I went and then that was, it really, really blew my mind. And now reverse was the case here. In that class, I was the oldest. Oh, wow. And then it was a fast-paced class. It was really, really fast-paced. And then I really, really could not catch up. I felt I'd actually wasted the money. However, I made friends with two of the people. One is Bukumi and the other one is Jerry. For me, I think my my story is actually going to be around mentorship, being open to learn and open to new to, to, to being challenged. My Bible says, be ye followers of them who through faith and patience has received the promise. So one thing I tell most people, young people around me, people who are, be careful who you listen to. Mm. Be careful who you associate yourself with. Faith comes by hearing. Mm. So you need, you really need to fuel what you're hearing. Okay, hearing. So while in Nigeria, I started doing interviews for jobs in the UK before mm. even leaving. So why did a man at the height of his career make such a bold move? What challenges did he face before finally finding a career that truly matched his potential in this new land. And then I started applying now, now I'm in the UK, at least I understood the ropes and the likes. But all of a sudden, interviews just went pause. Interview just went pause. I was not getting the interview, just, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. Okay, so what then do I do? So when we moved, we moved into Sterling, and then Sterling, I got a job as a cleaner. Mm. A job, a job as a cleaner, not to clean, but to clean Airbnbs. So I was going to Airbnb, I started getting calls again from students saying, oh, training, training. I'm like, oh, yes, training, let's do it. So I got back on training. I was cleaning Airbnbs, I was doing training. I was cleaning Airbnb, I was doing training. And the training was paying very well. Mm. Each student paid 100 pounds. Mm. Yes. And then I did three hours with them. Oh. Three hours with them. So I was doing three hours, one on one, sometimes two, sometimes three, on a weekly basis. So we did not only have bills, we could even afford any yeah. other. And the money was still coming from Airbnb, yeah. I was cleaning. Almost a month later, I just got to started getting interview again. I started my job in the UK as a contract, not even full time. If I then got a full time job, and then when I got a full time job, I got in as a senior data analyst at PwC. Mm. So I was there for one year and eight to eight months before I then moved to my next job as well. Mm. Too. Yes, you might be like, for my film for some months, things are quiet, money is not coming in, and the likes. The biggest thing is for you to hold on to God. And ask God, what is the next thing? What should I do next? Mm. Those are the biggest questions. What should I do next? What would you have me do here? What would you have me do there? Those are the biggest questions. And as I said earlier, 
Be followers of them who through faith and patience has received the promise. So who are those people who are in your network? Who are those people who, are, who you are following? Who are those people who you are hearing from? Who you get counsel from? Those things mm. are really, really critical. His journey wasn't smooth, quite all right. I mean, rejections here and there, career shifts, and moments of doubt filled the month that followed. Yet, he persevered. In the end, Ayodeji not only found a place for himself in the United Kingdom's data industry, now is flourishing, bringing his unique experiences from Nigeria to enrich the global stage. Okay, so for the PwC one, it was actually a recruiter that reached out to me. So back in the days, I used to write on LinkedIn a lot, publish stuff. Being visible is really, really critical, especially on LinkedIn. And then she reached out to me, I think, while we were seeing Nigeria uh, last week. And then I sent her some articles and written, stuff and written on LinkedIn back in the days. And I sent her my CV. She was like, oh, that's fine. That's really, really good. And she said, okay, there's this position coming up for a senior. Not even senior, there was senior, there was manager, there was senior, there was manager. And then I think there was maybe senior manager also. Now, in Nigeria, I'd risen to the place of a lead. And then when I spoke to one of my mentors about it, he said, he said, be humble enough to go for the senior. At that stage of my career, what I've done in data and the likes, I should be in manager. And the manager should be at least where I should at least start from. I said, you know, be humble enough to start from a senior. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So I said, okay, that's fine. I'll start from a senior. And it was not just senior. So there are different types of senior. Some, some seniors are technical leads. I did not know. I did not know. So they're like, okay, she said, that's fine. Amazing. You've got years of experience. And then I did the first interview. Always, the first interviews are always easy ones. Remember, I also, I also did other interviews that I got to the last stage and they just said, sorry, they went to another candidate. I don't have enough UK experience. So I put in for the first stage. First stage was just really, really easy. Tell us about yourself, past experience, past projects, what project have you managed? There was the second stage, I was majorly technical interviews. The last stage was over an hour. It was a conversation. It was, they just wanted to know it was behavioral. How are you going to solve the problem? What would be your approach? What are you going to do? So your ability to hold a conversation is really, really critical. Your ability to hold a conversation, not just only to hold a conversation, there's also you can have a conversation and also tilt the conversation in your favor. Tilt the conversation in your favor, and then you already know what's the follow-up question and you're just building on that. If you can build that rapport with the interviewer and he likes you, even if you didn't even do well, sometimes you might not get the job. They just called me, the recruiter was like, congratulations, you're really, really amazing. You impressed them by your experience. They would like to offer you this. I'm like, yes, I'm happy to take it. Do you believe in luck? Hmm. My own definition of luck is preparation meets opportunity. And above all, it's having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then one thing we must also know that in life is that there are ups and downs. Mm -hmm. The attitude you have on a job as a cleaner is also the same attitude you carry to your next job. Mm. The student I taught, I would always be in the meeting before them. Before the, and I always leave after they have left. Okay, there's a part of the story I didn't tell you. So when I got the PWD so far, the, the offer was not resumed immediately. I was resuming in three months. Yes. God. Mm -hmm. Three months. So what did I do? I got a care job. I just needed something else to do and they liked. So I was only doing one night. So for I thought to actually say that as well too. This is how I got here, where we share stories of resilience, adaptation, and the pursuit of a better future. We seek to inform, inspire, and educate thousands of professionals who choose to rebuild, to rise, and to thrive, proving that sometimes starting over is the most powerful step one can take. You need to join communities. That is it. Join a lot of communities. There are a lot of communities on the internet for people in technology who want to get a job and the likes. Go, go to a lot of events. Now, there are a lot of events online. Um, Zoom. Back back in the days, Twitter Spaces just launched. So I was always in those Twitter Spaces. It could even for software developers, I will be there. Just go and listen. Just go and listen. Go and hear. And if they are paid ones, if you can afford paid ones, please go for paid mentorship. Go for paid classes. They would actually help accelerate your learnings. I myself have gone for paid, paid classes. Even this year, I paid for more classes. If I'm even getting jobs because the thing about the job ladder is that for every level comes with a very, very new set of challenges. New dispensation requires you to open yourself to new knowledge. 
And that's what people don't know. You need to open yourself to new knowledge. Yes, there's a lot of certifications. There's a the Power BI certification is quite popular. There is um, the Python certification. Take all those certifications. But for you to actually cross that interview, you actually need to actually new, need new knowledge. Open yourself to hearing new things. Open yourself to hearing people who are who are talk about the journey from application and the likes. So, um, there are things you can list on your... There is, is how CVs should be done for people in data. And then it's called the XYZ. I use X to do Y and then achieve Z. And your Z should be in percentage. I, I achieve 45% downtown in reporting. As a data person, you have to have percentages. Oh, I built a data pipeline, moving data from this to the cloud. I migrated data from um, on-prem to the cloud. I use this, I use that. What did you use for the front end? What did you use for the pipeline? Bible says iron sharpened iron. Just like a, a friend sharpens the countenance of his friend. So iron cannot sharpen plastic. Who you work with, the communities you work with is really, really critical. Now, do not forget to subscribe, share, like, comment, and turn on post notifications for new videos. My name is Akinwale Fayemiro. Have a good one, guys.